Hey guys, so Obi-Wan Kenobi episodes 1 and 2 just came out on Disney Plus and I've got to say I didn't have very high expectations for the show but so far the show has definitely exceeded my expectations so I'm still trying to get over the prequels. There's so many questions I have from the prequel movies that still haven't been answered like did Anakin ever find out that Palpatine killed Padme? Because Palpatine did kill Padme, right? Because he sucked her life force out and used it to restore Anakin. That's why you could see them just as, you know, Padme finally died and took her last breath. That's when Anakin, you know, started to breathe. And I feel like the fact that they synchronized that so perfectly has to mean that Palpatine killed Padme. I don't know. Let me know your theories down below. I don't know if George Lucas ever has given a definitive answer as to what happened there or if we're meant to just speculate. But anyway, getting back to the show... So one thing I've noticed in each Star Wars trilogy is that there is a different... A different style when it comes to the lightsaber fights and this feels very much like the 90s prequel movies when it comes to the lightsaber fights it really helps to immerse me into that world and feel like it's the same timeline so the score was good it really helped you get immersed in the world and the opening scene, so there was a bunch of like Jedi kids training and honestly, I know this is probably an unpopular opinion from what I've seen on Twitter. A lot of people were saying it went too far. I think it didn't go far enough because it feels like they could have gone further and it would have added another weight of emotional intensity but they held back a lot in that scene and I guess like it is Disney plus like but I feel like this is a platform with the Star Wars TV shows to push the envelope a bit and go a little bit darker and Obi-Wan does feel like it's going to have that dark tone there isn't going to be a lot of that like slapstick sort of humor that we've seen in a few of the shows so I feel like this is the show that could have really taken it to that next step. So back on Tatooine, am I saying that right? Probably not. We see Obi-Wan spying on Luke like a creep. <laughs> and um, talking about Tatooine, Tatooine, I think that's how you say it, Tatooine. Can we just talk about that infamous line where Anakin is complaining about sand because everybody always complains about that line and it always bugs me because when you really think of it, Anakin grew up in this planet which was literally made of nothing but sand. Imagine whenever there was a sandstorm, how much of it would have gotten in your eyes and it would have been horrible. So for him to complain about sand was perfectly rational and logical and yes I get it it was a bit of a cheesy line but let's be honest a lot of the prequels were really cheesy and I feel like I like that about them you know that's one of the things that I like but it just feels like that particular line gets so much hate and nobody really seems to complain about like Jar Jar Binks who is a lot more cheesy in my opinion anyway that's just a little rant I needed to get out of the way. So anyway, we're on Tatooine and another Jedi finds Obi-Wan Kenobi and asks him for help because he's getting hunted by the Empire. So Obi-Wan basically says no, he's lost the will to fight. And it really reminds me a lot of the whole scene which will come later on with Luke and Ray, how Ray comes to the island and asks Luke for help and he's sort of saying no I've given up and then obviously finds his will to fight again but I just feel like that that arc that storyline wasn't really told very smoothly because one minute Obi-Wan is basically saying no we've lost the war it's over and then the next scene he's like 
you know, he's he's given up, but he wants to train Luke. And it's like, okay, make up your mind. Have you given up or do you still want to train Luke? I don't know. I get what he's doing in a way. He doesn't want to risk his cover for some random guy, as cold as that sounds. He doesn't want to risk it because he knows what's at stake is so much more important with Luke and everything. So I do get it. But anyway... So then we see Leia raised in luxury while her brother is most definitely living in poverty. And let me just say, I definitely, definitely think Leia was the best part of this. She is a little spitfire. Her kidnapping and relationship with Obi-Wan Kenobi was definitely one of the highlights of the episode for me. Well, it definitely was the highlight. I think Leia was just adorable. So I really like how we see more of the CD underworld, like in other shows, you know, it's explored more than it is in the movies, like we don't really see much of that sort of underworld in the main Star Wars movies, and it's such a fas fascinating world with so many different complex layers, and it's really interesting to see that other dynamic of how these people live in these really seedy areas. So let's talk about Reva, the third sister character. A very interesting character. I can't wait to see more of her backstory with Obi-Wan and find out why she hates him so much because, like, you could just say she just wants that recognition from Vader just to say, hey, I have finally given you what you've been hunting all these years, Obi-Wan. But I feel like it's more than her just wanting the credit and recognition I feel like she really is personally invested in it so I don't know much about her character I don't know if there's been like spin-off shows you know the Clone Wars the comics all that it definitely you know there's something there in the backstory and I can't wait to find out more so the pacing is good it doesn't reveal too much of itself too quickly I really like that, but it's not too slow either. I like the world building, all the characters are really interesting, the visuals of the like neon city with the Tokyo vibes are really interesting. And I feel like at the end of that scene where, you know, Obi-Wan finally finds out that Anakin's alive, you can see the emotional weight. And this show does feel like there's a lot of emotional weight in it. And it gets you invested in the story and the characters. And I can't wait to see when Vader and Obi-Wan finally meet face to face. And I just can't wait for more Vader in general. So I'm definitely looking forward to episode three. I think the only thing that's missing is like a sassy robot sidekick. Anyway, we might get one of them in the next episode. So I would give this an 8 out of 10. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of this so far. Are you going to tune in for next week's episode? Let me know. And if you could subscribe, like, all of that stuff, it really helps my channel. Thanks, guys.